Hello everyone, in this video I want to test a little bit of this ASRock B760M H2 M2. This is one of the cheapest board with B760 chipset and it has only two memory slots. So it could be good for memory overclocking. Uh, I bought this motherboard because I have good experience with this one. Actually very good experience with this one. And we'll see if that there is any similarities between, this, between those. Let's start by enabling XMP and this memory kit I already know that is not stable at 6400 with a mortar Wi-Fi B760M. So I am not expecting this to work, but let's try. And again, this kit is not booting at all. Um, on the mortar it would boot, but then fail any kind of stress test like Y Cruncher and on this board it doesn't even try to boot I mean it's fine but it's not working and so I consider this a fail of the memory kit of course but also the motherboard is actually like worse than the mortar because the mortar at least could boot and so yeah, apparently the, the fact that it's a dual D motherboard is not getting any, any, any better results with this flow and memory kit and I already tested with 6200 actually, and 6200 does boot but also crashes, which was the same thing in the mortar. But with 6200 in the mortar it would crash like halfway to the test, while this fails straight away. So it's, it's very clear to me that this doesn't work. And so yeah, um, this board doesn't really get us any good memory performance. I mean, it's half the price of the mortar, it's even less than half, I think, actually, because the mortar is more than 180, 200 territory. But the mortar has, like, miles ahead better VRM. And there is another B760M with dual DIMM from ASRock that has a lot better VRM, and it costs only, like, five bucks more. So this was just an experiment that I wanted to, to do. Um, we'll now test uh, undervolting with the KF CPU and see what happens as soon as I can get this to boot, but I'm gonna reset the CMOS. So let's get to voltage configuration. Uh, defaults are load line 4, which is fine. And let's set an offset of uh, minus 80, which should be usually stable for Alder Lake. And if the motherboard suffers clock stretching, it will show straight away. Let's set to XMP profile 3. which should work, I hope, 6,000. Um, let's get everything else to order. Uh, let's see if there's any other option around. Boot performance or turbo performance. Mm -mm -mm. This one is enabled. Oh, interesting. So long duration is 65 watts. Uh, it makes sense because the VRM are pathetic and there is nothing like to cover them. So yeah, there's a VRM heat sink on the top but not on the side. Um, so that makes sense, but we're gonna put it at 150 anyway. No, 95 is the maximum. Okay, makes sense again. Not really. Oh, it's disabled. So current excursion protection is apparently disabled by default. Let's see what happens with minus 80. Uh, we didn't disable any E core. Mm, I don't really remember what the score should be for R23, but I guess it should be more than 20,000. As far as I remember, um, yeah, maybe 18,000. Well, around 20,000. At least 16,000. No, maybe, yeah, at least 20,000. At least 20,000, because uh, the 1200F does 1,200. And that's a 6 core at 4 gigahertz. Well, this one has 8 cores at 4.7. Should have. And then there's 4, four P cores, which should be around 2 efficient cores. So that should land us to 2000 R23. Uh, it's taking a little while to boot again. I mean, that's 6000 XMP. But yeah, it did. So let's see. Here we are. Voltages look quite normal. Um, system agent is one volt, interesting. That's quite
quite low for all the settings. My motherboard is usually default to, oh no, here, no, T VGQTX is 135. That's good because that's the voltage for the RAM. Yeah, yeah. one volt for the system agent is very reasonable. Um, as long as the, the RAM is 6000, yeah, the RAM is 6000. So let's start Cinebench. And we should see immediately by looking at the power draw if we're actually clock stretching and hmm, we are not we're at 125 watts so that makes sense that's the power limit for sh short term clock is reading good voltages are reading quite good temperature is a bit on the low side but I guess that's because the heat sink is massive Let's see how it ends up. This looks promising for minus 80. We're now 95 watts limit. Yeah, it's working. So that's good. That's very good. Um, let's try again with a lower offset and see what happens. There we are. Let's drop low. Oh, minus 100. Oh, but it set the load line to calibration to 1. Why? That doesn't make sense. Let's get back to, let's say, 4 again. Yeah, why not? Like most motherboards would work at minus 4. I mean, minus 104. Uh, this should lead to unstable territory for the average other Lake CPU, in my experience. Like for the average, like i7 and a. Uh, yeah, i7 that I never bought an i9 doesn't make sense for me but I bought many i7s and the ones that I did were always around minus 70 to minus 100 so minus 100 should definitely be unstable but this motherboard trick does by applying a uh, higher load like calibration and that is not fair so we'll test again with minus 100 and minus as I mean again again uh, load like calibration of 4 Oh, not not really sure. Uh, let's see. And I'm st started. I got started. Uh, we could be unstable, or we could be clock stretching. Okay, we're at clock stretching now because at 87 watts is the maximum power draw. So this is clock stretching. <sighs> Why? Yeah, 40 degrees super low yeah voltages are low for sure but so is the performance is it's awful and we'll lock it at 87 watts so that's definitely clock stretching yeah so yeah this also has the same bug as the msi board where we are clock stretching even with an unlocked cpu and we should now try with the locker CPU and see what happens now because uh, I don't have light load here and let's see what happens if I put an eye higher here by the way here's the score which is less than half as always for clock stretching and we now get with this 12400 non-F which is a C0 die 12400 F is in let's check if it kept the voltage offset, it, it did. Uh, minus 100 should be perfectly good for 12400. In my experience, they do around 120, 140, that range. So uh, 100 is sur surely good. I could probably do with 100 and LLC 5. And let's see, see the bench, it should be 1234 or 100. 1200 no sorry 12,000 and 345 it's usually around that area not 15 and power usage should be in the 80s 70s if it's under voltage maybe even 60s and we're in the 60s so that could be working that that's probably working yeah since we are in the 60s and not in the 30s so let's see the final result. Uh, I think it's quite speedy, so it should be okay. And here we are. Test is finishing. 
not priority. Yeah, it is. It's working. So this offset works because again, it should be in the 80s if we didn't undervolt. And so yeah, it's working. Again, very odd. And now let's try with the H0 die and see with this last test. The F is in. I assume we kept the undervolt just like before. And let's go. Let's go. Oh, it did start already. So that's not good. It took a long, long time to start, which makes me think we're searching. But hmm, interesting. Fifty-one watts. Fifty-one watts. This is a weird value. Uh, I assume we're stretching because the system is quite slow. It's quite unresponsive. Uh, it was, I guess, before starting to the bench. And but that's, that's only ten watts lower than than before, which could be also explained by. But I think that the system is low because I. I it seems to me that this moment is low, but my eye is not that trained, so I might be wrong. So let's see up until it finishes what happens. Um, just for a quick recap for anyone that doesn't follow me and didn't see the videos before. So with Elder Lake we have two different dies. One is H0, which is made of only six performance cores, no e efficiency cores at all you know, on the die. So it's a very, very like monolithic, simple die, very similar to older Intel architectures. While the C0 die also has eight efficiency cores and eight performance cores in total. So that means that you can have an i5 that is made out of C0 die, which is actually made of the, of, a, of the full die, but only six performance cores are active. And so far, what happened with the Alder Lake was that if you had a C0 die, you could undervolt, and if you had an H0 die, you couldn't. And that was the rule up until, I guess, this round of testing for some reason, because on the latest BIOS versions, uh, it turns out that the unlocked CPUs, even if they are C0, because all unlocked CPUs are C0, you couldn't undervolt. I mean, you can undervolt, but you, can clock, uh, you clock stretch. You, you get a lower performance because the, the CPU gets in some kind of protection mode and it slows down and gets half speed. Even though the system reports that the clock is full 4 gigahertz, clock is 4 gigahertz here, the actual, like the effective clock is lower and it doesn't even show here. Like you see effective clock is 4, giga, 4 gigahertz in the hardware info, but the system is terribly slow. I mean, not terribly. If you're not trained, if you don't have a trained eye, you could maybe get mistaken, but I, I mean, I started to record and I thought the Cinebench would, didn't start and here we are. So Cinebench completed and it's half the score. I mean, less than half the score. And so that's it. So only MSI lately, like the thing is, what, that, is, that makes everything like weirder is that lately MSI figured out a way to also undervolt on the H0 die while every other brand doesn't. And on this particular case with this other motherboard, you cannot undervolt anything but locked H, uh, Chi0, Chi0. Chi and this is like, I mean, it's hard to explain to you because I've been through a lot. And so I guess this explanation was not that easy to follow because it's still twisted in my mind as well. But you have to follow all the other videos and you will maybe get a picture of what's happening, which doesn't make sense. So. It's really hard to, to get a, like, you get a picture and it doesn't make sense. But that's the situation in the end of 2024. And ciao again from Pizza Undervolt.